In this video, I want to give a more calculus-based interpretation, a way of thinking about the marginal rate of substitution. Um, so if we take a look at this in difference curve, we want to think about the marginal rate of substitution as being the negative of the slope of this indifference curve. So it would be a positive number. We want to think about it as the slope here at point A. Now, if you remember from your calculus classes, slope is just going to be, if, if we think of health as y and taste as x, it's just going to be dy dx. And so whenever we see a term in our, uh, in our uh, taking the derivative here, uh, we'll have dy dx, that will be our slope. And so we know the marginal rate of substitution, because it is the negative of the slope, is the negative of dy dx. An indifference curve is defined as the x's and y's that give you the same utility. Um, if we think of this as a multivariable function, utility is a function of x, it's a function of how much taste you have, it's a function of y, how much health you have, and um, the utilities, uh, the x's and y's that give us 10 are all on the same indifference curve. And so we can think about taking a total derivative of this expression, really this is an identity if we think about staying on the indifference curve. So how do we stay on that indifference curve? Well, one way to do that is to go ahead and parameterize the indifference curve by this function f of x. So let's go ahead and parameterize that and substitute that in. And then, once we take a derivative with respect to x, we're staying on the indifference curve. And so we know that uh, we're uh, able to go ahead and take the derivative of both sides of this. So let's go ahead and do that. Take the derivative, the total derivative of both sides here. So we take the derivative of utility with respect to x. That's the first argument. Then we can take the derivative of utility with respect to y. That's the second argument. But then, because y is a function of x, we take the derivative of y, or in this case, it's the function of x with respect to x. And that equals, well, the right-hand side doesn't depend on x. That equals 0. And we can go ahead and look at this. That's going to be our dy dx. And we can go ahead and solve for dy dx. Notice we take the negative of du dx. We can divide by du dy, and that will equal dy dx. Now notice we can multiply both sides by negative 1. I'll get rid of that negative there, and that will get us a negative of the slope. Well, remember when we started here? We have the negative of the slope, and we call that something. That's our marginal rate of substitution. Our marginal rate of substitution equals the negative dy dx, and it equals this derivative divided by this derivative. Well, it turns out that these are the marginal utility of x and the marginal utility of y. One way to get marginals uh, out, of, out of a function is just to take the derivative. You're thinking about the instantaneous change in utility as you increment up x. That's going to be your marginal utility of x. And you're thinking about the instantaneous change in utility as you increment up y. That's going to be your change in y, or marginal utility of y. And so there you have it. An alternative calculus-based justification for this very important equation. Marginal rate of substitution equals the ratio of marginal utilities, marginal utility of x, over marginal utility of y.